So my friends, in today's video, we're taking a look at one of my favorite technologies, the QNED mini LED TVs. This is the QNED 86, and it is a 75 inch version. So let's take a closer look. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So earlier this year, I took a look at the QNED 91, again, a mini LED TV from LG, and this has been my main TV for the past six or seven months in my main living room. And the fact that it's opposite a window and it's bright was brilliant. So this year when LG asked me to have a look at the LG QNED 86, then definitely it was one that I wanted to check out. Now this is actually the slightly lower version model, and I'll come on to the very minor differences between the two in just one second. The LG QNED 86 has two HDMI 2.1 ports, both of these supporting 120Hz refresh rate, and also one of these ports is an eARC port, an enhanced audio return channel. Now, for the majority of people, two HDMI 2.1 ports will be plenty. In fact, I don't actually think that you need to have four. If you have got multiple consoles, or however, or a high-end gaming PC, then it's something to bear in mind, especially if you've got a soundbar as well. For me, I've just got the eARC soundbar and the PS5, and so therefore having just two 2.1 ports is absolutely fine. All of the other ports are pretty much standard and exactly what you would expect. And I definitely think that in these times of money troubles and money hardships, then saving money where you can is definitely worthwhile doing. So why pay for something extra if you're not going to actually use it? Now, as you can see, I've wall mounted mine, but it does come with a really smart and very sexy looking stand. I absolutely love this thing. It's the same that was on the 65 inch version last year. It's the slightly darker gray on the QNED 86, and I think that actually looks the best. So this is the TV installed on the wall, and I do have to say, I think it looks great. Just like last year, it's bright and vivid. The colors are incredible, and back against the wall, it definitely looks brilliant. This is the door, the window that I was telling you about, and so therefore having the mini LED with the extra brightness definitely helps with the reflection handling. Now I know not everyone can install their TV on the wall, but if you can, these bigger TVs sit back really close and it definitely adds to the whole aesthetics of the room and it doesn't then protrude forward. But I understand if you do need to use the stand, but the good news is the stand on this TV is good. Now, continuing on about the design, the bezels around the edge of this TV, they're not the thinnest that I've ever seen, but they're certainly not the thickest. They come in at a maximum of just under 11 millimeters, which I think is absolutely fine. And certainly when you're watching TV, you really don't notice it. Now, if you are considering between the LG QNED 86 or the QNED 91, then the differences are very minimal. There's just no voice control on the 86. It's slightly thicker in its design. The QNED 86 has precision dimming, but it doesn't have the precision dimming pro. It also doesn't have the color consistency feature, which the QNED 91 does. This QNED Mini LED TV runs the latest 2022 version of WebOS, which I do have to say is growing on me as a software package. It's definitely one of the better ones out there. I'm not sure whether it's my favorite, but it's certainly one amongst the top. Now, all of the menu system is completely comprehensive and very easy to use, and the choice of changing things is incredible. What I would say is the first thing that I would change is turn off eco mode, because that really does restrict the capability of what the TV can deliver. Now, speaking of software, this has also a great software package, and this year it just doesn't seem as bloated as maybe in previous years. The WebOS works quickly and efficiently, and is as customizable as a what it was in previous years. Certainly navigating between all of the different apps was a pleasure, it didn't seem to lag at all, and everything worked really well. I will go over this in a little bit more detail when I do my full review, which will be coming in the next couple of weeks after I've calibrated the TV and got it all set up and really put it through its paces. There are familiar features like the home dashboard, which again is something which I don't think that many people use, but it's a nice touch if you are connecting this to other LG products and also other smart products. And you have the same art gallery effect so that you can get nice effects as background type screensavers on the screen. Now, one feature that didn't work brilliant for me last year was multi-view, but this year I'm pleased to say I was able to hook it up to an app very easily and it worked great. 
So this is where you can have either picture-in-picture picture or side-by-side -side picture, and you can have apps running on the side and also an HDMI source. What you can't have, though, are two HDMI inputs because there's obviously only one tuner. Game Optimizer is also featured similar to last year, and here is a one-stop shop where you can go in and change your different game settings. This is definitely not a gimmick, it's a feature which I use all the time. It's really handy to quickly switch between different game modes, and this will then affect things like input lag as well. You can also go into the multi-view at this point as well, so if you want to play a game and also therefore watch something on an app, for instance, then you can do that at exactly the same time. Another feature which is present which I don't use is cloud gaming and this is where if you've got a compatible controller you can use and take advantage of Google Stadia and use instant play games from the latest PC games on NVIDIA's GeForce Now app. So when I do my full review I'll do a full section on gaming and show you how to change all of the different settings and take advantage like features like HDIG and so forth so that will come in the next few weeks. This TV has a feature called precision dimming, which means that the mini LEDs deliver brighter and clearer images, while unique dimming zones will give you darker blacks. Now, that helps to prevent blooming. Now, with the camera settings, you will see elevated blooming compared to what it's like in real life. However, with this test, I have to say it was very minimal. In fact, I was really impressed with not only the blooming on this TV, but also the actual motion. The motion was really good. It definitely was something which was far better than a lot of LED TVs I've tested. And if you look at the subtitle blooming, you get a better idea of how minimal it is. It really is very, very minor. Another test I run on all new TVs is the block color test, because this will show any areas of dirty screen, or DSE. And I do have to say, similar to last year, I think, in fact, this year it's even better. This is crystal clear. There are no dark areas at all. It looked absolutely brilliant. Sometimes there's bands can form across the screen and it can be really off-putting when watching things like sport. As I mentioned in last year's model, the combination of quantum dot and nanocell mini LED technology does give you incredible bright and colorful images, and it is just the same on this year's model. I can't really see any difference. In fact, if anything, it feels more vibrant than what last year's one does. Just look at how those colors are popping off the screen. Now, it's easier to show you some what I would call beauty shots of LG provided material, but what about normal TV? Well, normal TV is all also really good. With that Alpha 7 Generation 5 AI processor 4K, you're getting great upscaling. Now with any upscaling, it obviously is dependent upon the original source, but this is just standard satellite TV. I do show just normal commercials because they're the ones which have not really been enhanced to give you a better picture. So it gives you an idea of skin tones and colors and how they work together on the screen. And again, I think they just look absolutely fantastic. I think from the first moment you turn on one of these TVs, you'll definitely notice the difference comparing it to a standard LED TV. It really is much more vibrant. It's certainly not oversaturated, but it just gives you that wow factor. And that's why right at the beginning of this video, I said, I love this technology. And I have to say, I'm still blown away by it even today. So my friends, when I do my full review, I'll go into a lot more detail with regard to the picture modes, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, and also things like Filmmaker Mode. I'll also answer any of the questions that you raise in this video, so be sure to leave a comment, and make sure that you check out the link in the description, and that will give you a lot more information about this TV, what it does, how much it is, and where you can get it from. But certainly when it comes to value for money, considering the performance that's delivered, this is still one of my favorite TV technologies. Check out the link in the description, my friends. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope it's been useful, and I look forward to seeing you on the full review coming very soon.